Hi everyone, this is Anson from AnsonAlex.com and in this video I'm going to provide an overview of what Keychain Access is on Mac OS X and how you can use it. So what Keychain Access is, and we'll open it up here while I start explaining, the easiest way to find it is to go to your spotlight in the top right and just search Key or Keychain and you should see it pop up in the list and then you can click to open it. <clears throat> what Keychain Access is, is it's a application that's native to Mac computers, it's built into the operating system, that allows you to save your passwords so that you don't have to enter them every single time you go to a particular website. When we open up Keychain Access, we see a bunch of stuff in here and it can be a little confusing, but one of the things we want to look at is this login. This is the default keychain that's already been created for us just by creating a user account on our computer. Now the password to this keychain is the same password that you use when you log into your user account. So I'm using this user account right now, the AnsonAlex.com new. The same password that I use to log into that account is the password that I'll use when I unlock my keychain. Now by logging into my account, my keychain is automatically going to be unlocked. Which means that if I have saved passwords and I go to a website associated with one of my saved passwords, that username and password should already be entered. Now to get started with Keychain Access, you actually don't even have to open up this application. What you need to do is go on the internet and go to a website where you use a username and password to log in. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. I'm just going to open up Safari down here in my toolbar, and I'm just going to go to Google, actually let's go to gmail.com. Now, when I log into my email account, I'm going to go up here to sign in, you'll notice that nothing is saved here in my web browser because I haven't saved it yet for Keychain Access. I need to log in the first time. So if I log in this first time here and I click Sign In, you'll notice that I get this pop-up box that comes up automatically and this is Keychain Access right here. It's asking me, do I want to save this password? If I hit Never for this website, I'm never going to get the option to save this password in my Keychain Access again. I'll have to go in and I'll have to change some preferences within Keychain Access to get this to pop up again. If you're just logging in on a friend's computer or somebody else is logging in on your computer, you can just hit Not Now. And that way, it's not going to save this username and password at all, but if somebody else comes to log into Gmail, it'll prompt them whether or not they want to save the password. Now, if this is your account and you do want to save it, you can hit Save Password. It's going to log into Gmail. I'm not going to show you that right now because you don't need to all see my Gmail account. In order to see the passwords that we've saved in Keychain Access, we have to move away from this login section here in Keychain Access and we have to click on local items because we stored it locally. We've saved this password to our machine. And you'll notice that I now have a line item in here for accounts.google.com with my username and then my password is in here as well. If you want to see what your password is, you can right click on the line item and click get info. It's going to pop up on a screen that has all the information about this account. And if I click the Show Password button, which I'm not going to do because I don't think you all need to see my password, it will show me what that password is. And the reason I can see that is because I am currently in Keychain Access and I've logged into my user account on my computer. So Keychain Access is open to me right now. I don't have to enter my master password. Now let's say somebody else is going to be using your computer for a few minutes and you're really concerned about some of the passwords you have saved in Keychain Access. What you can do is you can come in here to Keychain Access, just like we are right now, and you can click on the lock at the top left of the screen. You, when you do that, you'll notice that everything disappears from this screen. Your contents of your Keychain are no longer visible. So people can't just go into Keychain Access and hit Show Password and see your password because you've locked it. Now if you click the lock to unlock it, you have to enter the password for your user account that you're logged into on this computer. So I enter my password, and boom my accounts are now being displayed. As soon as I add another account in Safari to my Keychain Access, just by logging in and clicking Save, it's going to be added as a line item down here as well. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at that, just so we have two examples of it. I'm going to go back into Safari. I'm going to go to Facebook.com, and I'm going to log in to my Facebook account. You'll notice as I log in, it asks me if I want to save the password. If I hit yes, it's going to save it. I'm going to quit out of here quick. And you'll notice now in Keychain, I have another line item, and this time it's for Facebook. Now, if at any time maybe my password changes or I just decide I don't want my password saved in Facebook or Gmail again, what I can do is I can come in here to Keychain Access, I can go to my local items, 
I could right click on one of the items and I could just delete it. I get a pop-up message confirming and that password and username is no longer stored in Keychain Access. There's one other aspect of Keychain Access that I'd like to show you before I go, and that is that you can create multiple keychains on one computer. So we have the default keychain that was created automatically for us when we created our user account, which is what we've been using so far in this video. But let's say we've got another user on the computer, we want to use the same user account, but we have a different set of passwords. Or maybe you have personal passwords and business passwords. It could be multiple situations where you could use this for you can actually create an entirely separate keychain. If we go up here to File and Keychain Access, we can click New Keychain, and we can create a brand new keychain. We can just call this Personal. And I'm gonna save it in the Keychains folder. It's a folder that's already on my computer. That's where I want it. That's where Keychain Access knows to see it, so that's fine. We're gonna hit Create. Now we need to create a password for this keychain. This is gonna be the master password for this keychain, so make sure it's something you can remember. Obviously mine's weak right now, but you could create a much stronger one if you were doing this permanently. So I hit OK. And now you'll notice that over here on the left in my keychains, I have my personal keychain where I could store more user accounts and passwords. So I could come in here and I could find this local items keychain and I could lock that so nobody has access to that one. Yet the personal keychain is, is still accessible. If it's for a child or just, again, another family member, you can lock yours, and then they can have theirs open when they're done. They can hit lock. They can lock their keychain, and you can go over here, and you can unlock yours. So you can use multiple keychains on one user account for multiple users. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. I actually did it because so many of you requested it in my beginner's tutorial on Mac. So go ahead and check that video out as well. I'll post a link to that in the description of this one here on YouTube. If you have specific videos related to Mac OS X that you'd like to see more information on, some tutorials produced for, go ahead and let me know in the comments section of this video here on YouTube or on AntsonAlex.com. If you enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more technology tips and tutorials. That's all I have for you for right now. This is Anson from AntsonAlex.com.